Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother Kasafo. Here with your brother Zakwa. We wish you all a happy feast of dedication. Hope you all are enjoying it. And today we are getting into our first law class. We're going to be discussing whether do we need to still keep the law. And jumping right into it. We have the teaching of Christ and his apostles and prophets on one accord in regards to the law of Elohim. Let's see what Christ said in Matthew 5 and 17, please. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He must fulfill all the law and the prophecy of the prophets. He came on earth to fulfill a portion of the law and the prophets and the Psalms, but not to destroy the whole law. Can we read Luke chapter 24, verse 44 to 47, please? And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. That's the portion he came to fulfill in the earth. Yet his spirit is fulfilling the other prophecies as well, as he is the spirit of prophecy according to Revelations. Hence, nothing in the law shall pass until all is fulfilled. Can you read Matthew 5, verse 18 to 20, please? For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. The prophecies are not all fulfilled, and heaven and earth has not passed, so the law is not destroyed. Continue, please. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Hence, doing and teaching the commandments comes with a reward in the kingdom of heaven. Continue, please. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. This is important to understand the scribes and Pharisees' righteousness so we can know what righteousness we need to exceed. The Pharisees' righteousness was hypocrisy, speaking the law, but not doing it themselves. Can you read the portion of Luke chapter 12, verse 1, please? Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. And can you read Matthew 23, verse 2 and 3 to see how they were doing this hypocrisy. Saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you, observe. That observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. What else did they do in their hypocrisy? Can you read Matthew 23, verse 28, please? Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. So thus we see the righteousness we have to exceed. Speaking the righteousness of the law and appearing righteous to men, but not actually doing the law by hypocrisy and iniquity within our hearts and thoughts will not get us into the kingdom. Paul came to preach the gospel and he was showing what Christ wanted him to teach. Can you read Acts chapter 26 verse 18? Through 20, please. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto Elohim, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to Allah and do works meet for repentance. So we see what Paul was preaching. As he explained it himself, he was teaching that we should repent and turn to Allah 
and do works meet for repentance. The faith of Christ for forgiveness of sins is supposed to lead us to repent and do works meet for repentance. Understanding this, let's see what Clement was teaching in 2 Clement chapter 16, verse 1 and 2, please. Therefore, brethren, since we have found no small opportunity for repentance, seeing that we have time, let us turn again unto Allah mm -hmm. that called us. While we have still one that receiveth us. For if we bid farewell to these enjoyments and conquer our soul in refusing to fulfill its evil lusts, we shall be partakers of the mercy of Yahche. That's important to understand and remember. If we conquer our soul in refusing to fulfill its evil lusts, we shall be partakers of the mercy of Yahche. We, this touches back to knowing we have to know ourselves and know what pleasures we have to know what to refrain ourselves from. Let's see what else Clement says in Second Clement chapter 17, verse 3 through 7, please. And let us not think to give heed and believe now only while we have departed home. Let us remember the commandments of the Lord. And not suffer ourselves to be dragged off the other way by our worldly lusts. But coming hither more frequently, let us strive to go forward in the commandments of the Lord, that we all, having the same mind, may be gathered together unto life. Interesting that he was exhorting us, let's not only believe while we're here together, gathered, congregating, let's stay in the faith no matter where we are. And let us also continue coming together more frequently. Here we are now, we're establishing a law class so we can have more time together for building so that we can strive to go forward in the commandments of the Lord that we all having the same mind may be gathered together unto life. Right. If you have anything, jump in. Or continue. Definitely. For the Lord said, I come to gather together all the nations, tribes, and languages Herein he speaketh of the day of his appearing, when he shall come and redeem us, each man according to his works. Okay. Now we know what he's speaking of. Our works is going to get us gathered unto life by Christ. Continue, please. And the unbelievers shall see his glory and his might, and they shall be amazed when they see the kingdom of the world given to Yahweh, saying, Woe unto us, for thou was and we knew it not, and believed not. And we obeyed not the presbyteries when they told us of our salvation. And their worm shall not die, and their fire shall not be quenched. And they shall be as for a spectacle unto all flesh. Okay. Continue, please. He speaketh of that day of judgment, when men shall see those among us that live unholy lives, and dealt falsely with the commandments of Yahweh Christ. Look at specifically, they dealt falsely with the commandments of Yahweh Christ. He is the word of Allah. His commandments are the law of Allah. We can't deal falsely with it. We have to do it in truth and deal in truth with it without hypocrisy. Continue, please. But the righteous done good and endured torments and hated pleasures of the soul. When they shall behold them that have done amiss and denied Yahweh by their words or by their deeds, how that they are punished with grievous torments and unquenchable fire, shall give glory to Allah, saying, There will be hope for him that have served Allah with his whole heart. Amen. This is important to keep in mind and understand. If we hate the pleasure of the soul, Understanding ourselves and knowing what things our soul has pleasure in that are not good and refrain from it and hating those works. And we make sure we do not deny Yahweh by our words or our deeds. We'll have that hope serving Allah with our whole heart. Okay. Continue when you're ready. Mm -hmm. Therefore, let us also be found among those that give thanks. Among those that have served Allah and not among the unholy that are judged. So to be among those that give thanks and those that serve Allah, we have to hate the pleasure of the soul and do not deny Yahche in word or deed to go away from his law or the fruits of the spirit that come from it. Continue in chapter 
19, verse 2 through 4, please. Second Clement chapter 19, verse 2. And let us not be displeased and vexed, fools that we are. Whensoever anyone admonisheth us, or turneth us aside from unrighteousness unto righteousness. That's key. Be willing. Love correction. He's given us understanding of what we need to actually attain unto that life. Okay? Let's not be as a fool to get vexed or displeased when we're corrected. Continue, please. For sometimes, while we do evil things, we perceive it not by reason of the double-mindedness and unbelief which is in our breasts. And we are darkened in our understanding by our vain lusts. This is a fact that we have to come to terms with, that we still have growing to do. And knowing that in humility, it helps to be able to take correction and receive it, knowing that, hey, I don't know everything. I'm still working to overcome myself, my own double-mindedness of unbelief in my own heart. We have to be true to ourselves. Knowing that and knowing we still have struggle with some lust that we need to overcome so that we can hear correction with our whole heart and continue to grow. Continue when you're ready. And not get angered or going to pride when being corrected thinking that we already understand ourselves and that no one else can correct us or see something that can actually help us to become a better person or a better person than Yache to actually keep the commandments. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Let us therefore practice righteousness that we may be saved unto the end. Blessed are they that obey these ordinances Though they may endure affliction for a short time in the world, they will gather the immortal fruit of the resurrection. Amen. Working that righteousness, practicing that righteousness to be saved by not getting into our feelings, knowing that we have growing to do and we're not where we want to be yet. That honesty, that's going to bless us because we're actually obeying the ordinance of taking correction with humility he really understood a key element for growth and was teaching us. Continue, please. Therefore, let not the holy be greed. If he be miserable in the times that now are, a blessed time awaiteth him. He shall live again in heaven with our fathers and shall have rejoicing throughout a sorrowless eternity. And so think of the end. Remember the end that we're headed for. Let's see, Ignatius understanding for our guidance ignatius to the ephesians chapter 14 verse 1 and 2 please um, if these are any records that you don't have please visit our website at www.hebrewreaders.com so you can download these documents download these records please thanks none of these things is hidden from you if you be perfect in your faith and love toward yache christ for these are the beginning and end of life Faith is the beginning, and love is the end. And the two being found in unity are Elohim, while all things else follow in their train unto true nobility. No man professing faith sinneth, and no man professing love hateth. The tree is manifest from its fruit, so they that profess to be Christ's shall be seen through their actions, for the work is not a thing of profession now, but is seen then when one is found in the power of faith unto the end. Now, this is interesting. Faith is the beginning, love is the end. In the profession of faith, there's no sinning. And through not sinning in faith, we're going to attain unto love. And when we get to that love, there's no hatred in it. So we start with faith and keeping the law to end up in love by bearing all the fruits of the Spirit. And that combination is going to manifest Christ through our actions. That'll be seen in the end. Though it may not look that way to the world, it's going to be seen in our actions unto Christ. This is the righteousness of Allah that he desires us to walk in without the animal sacrifices. 
without the carnal ordinances of blood of bulls and rams, but through faith and good works. Let's read Romans chapter 3, verse 21 through 28, please. But now the righteousness of Elohim without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Just as Christ said, the law and the prophets are not destroyed, the apostles in the New Testament are speaking of the things still in process of being fulfilled by the Spirit of Christ and the law and the prophets. Continue, please. All right. And the righteousness without the law is manifested, talking about animal sacrifice. Okay. Thank you. Even the righteousness of Allah, which is by faith of Yahweh Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of Allah, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Yahweh, whom Allah hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of Allah. And that helps confirm that the law that he was referring to is the sacrifices because Christ is a propitiation. The law was made for atoning for sins, the law of sacrifices, but now Christ through his blood, he is the atoning propitiation for us. And that's what Paul was referring to. And he's a propitiation for past sins to be forgiven by faith in Christ's blood. Continue, please. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Yahche. So you have justification through faith in his blood. Continue, please. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So there we see the blood of bulls and rams and sacrifice is not needed to justify us now that faith in the blood of Christ, the Lamb of Allah has come. Because the law, let's see what Paul is teaching in regards to the law of sacrifices to understand why we don't need the deeds of the law to be justified. And if you want more edification on the deeds and works of the law, you can actually go to our website and we have a tab for it. Thank you. Can you read Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1, and then verse 4 through 10, please? All right. Um, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. So we see the deeds of the law could not actually make us perfect. All right. And why so? Verse 4, please. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. This is why the deeds of the law could not justify us. They can't take away sins. Continue reading, please. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure then said i lo i come in the volume of the book that is written of me to do thy will o elohim above when he said sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering of sin thou wouldest not neither had his pleasure therein which are offered by the law then said he lo i come to do thy will o elohim he taketh away the first that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahweh Christ once for all. So understand what Paul was speaking of. He was speaking, comparing the two. You have the offering of the body of Yahweh Christ once and for all, being compared to sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin that could not purge the conscience and that Allah Hayyam didn't have no pleasure in that were offered by the law. All right. Now, Paul goes on to teach. Can you read Romans 3, <laughs> 31, please? 
Do we then make void the law through faith? A lie and forbid. Yea, we establish the law. All the law is truly established through faith. Because now we have the true propitiation in Yahche. We have the spiritual propitiation in Yahche, sanctifying us in the heavens along with the spiritual law. Now it's all one together. And in that establishment of the law, now that true faith has come from the heart, the law also is established to be kept from the heart in all our actions, not to continue in sin, since we have this grace. Can you read Romans 6, and verse 1 to 2, please? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin, that grace may abound? Allah forbid. How shall we, that are dead to sin, live any longer therein? We can't continue in sin because of grace. We have to die to sin by faith and no longer live in it. We have liberty from the law of animal sacrifices through Christ so that we may walk in love, fulfilling the law. Can you read Galatians 5, verse 13 and 14, please? For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only you have not liberty or an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So you see, Paul is actually teaching the law. Thus, the liberty we have from animal sacrifice through faith in Christ is not to be used for an occasion to the flesh to sin because we're under his grace, but rather we are to use this liberty to serve one another by love, to fulfill the law, by loving our neighbor as ourselves, to overcome all the lusts of the flesh we had formerly had pleasure in. Can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 7, please? Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Doeth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. That's for understanding of the love we're supposed to serve one another by, because charity is love. It's interesting. Charity actually delivers you from pride. It delivers you from anger. It delivers you from uh, unrighteousness of not keeping the law. Mm -hmm. Um. It delivers you from self-centeredness or selfishness. Um, it delivers you even from sinning in your mind because it thinketh no evil. Yeah, so that's when you really get to understand how the law is fulfilled and loving thy neighbor as thyself or loving Allah with all your heart and all your might and all your soul. Because if you actually truly understand love or charity, it actually encompasses the law. That's what Paul was teaching. Can you read Romans 13, verse 8 through 10, please? Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment it is briefly comprehended in this saying namely thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself love worketh no ill to his neighbor therefore love is fulfilling of the law so that helps us understand when we see love our neighbor as ourselves that's actually speaking of all the law any other commandment is comprehended briefly in that one saying Love your neighbor as yourself. Right. right? But the law actually teaches us how to be at peace with one another and how to serve Allah and love him. So it starts with faith to do it. <laughs> and then love is the end of it, of completing it. So. Amen. 
And if we get to the place where we're actually fulfilling all the love, where we get to the place of being in love completely, it's going to bring a reward for us. Can you read Ignatius to the Ephesians chapter 8, verse 1, please? Hmm? For when no lust is established in you, which have power to torment you, then truly you live after Elohim. That's when we know we're really in life. Truly. He said, then truly ye live after Elohim. So this comes back to that humility Clement spake of, of knowing, hey, double-mindedness still has place in me. There's still lust in me. There's still things I need to overcome. We have to be honest with ourselves to know what lust is still at work. We have to know that so that we can actually put the work in and also receive the correction to get to the place where we're actually living after Allah Hayyam. He that speaketh truth in his heart shall enter into the holy hill. So let's be honest with ourselves to know what lust still is establishing us, what still has place, so that we can work to attain unto love so that no lust will be established so that we can actually live on Talahayim. We can't live on Talahayim with any lust in us. We have to keep his commandments to live unto him. Can you read Hermas Mandate 7, chapter 1, verse 4 through 5, please? Therefore, the fear of the Lord is powerful and great and glorious. Fear the Lord then, and thou shalt live unto him. Yea, and as many of them that keep his commandments as shall fear him shall live unto Elohim. Wherefore, sir, say I, didst thou say concerning those that keep his commandments, they shall live unto Elohim? Because, saith he, every creature feareth the Lord, but not everyone keepeth his commandments. Those then that fear him and keep his commandments, they have life unto Elohim. But they that keep not his commandments have no life in them. There we see we actually have to keep the commandments, not just be hearers only to be justified by faith in Christ. Can you read Romans 2 and 13, please? For not the hearers of the law are just before Elohim, but the doers of the law shall be justified. And we went there so you can see the apostles, disciples like Hermas and the prophets were all speaking of the same thing. The law actually has to be done to be justified because we show our faith by our works. It's James 2.26, please. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Knowing that faith without works is dead. Let's see what Paul admonishes us so that we may live. Romans 6, verse 12 and 13, please. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto Elohim, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto Elohim. Paul teaches us to yield unto the law to do righteousness so we can stop sinning in unrighteousness. Continue verse 14 and 15, please. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. So understand that, remember, the law of sacrifices could not purge the conscience. So the guilty conscience will continue in sin. But now that we're under grace by the purging of Christ's sacrifice, which purges our heart to live on Talahayim, now we are under a better sacrifice, a blood that speaketh better things so that we can actually come out of our guilty conscience and practice righteousness toward Talahayim. A blood that can actually atone for us. Right. But what then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Allah I am forbid. Lord forbid that we should sin because of grace. The reason being, what is he saying in verse 16, please? Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, 
or of obedience unto righteousness. So obedience unto righteousness is serving Christ. On the other hand, continuing in sin unto death is serving the devil. For this cause, Paul wants us to wake up to the knowledge of the truth. Can you read 1 Corinthians 15 verse 34, please? Awake to righteousness and sin not. That's what Paul's gospel was teaching us to do. Wake up to righteousness by faith and stop sinning. Continue, please. For some have not the knowledge of Elohim. I speak this to your shame. Unfortunately, not everyone understood the knowledge of Elohim that he was teaching, though. Some slandered his teaching to say we should do evil and continue in sin so that the good of Christ may come. Can you read Romans 3 and 8, please? And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come. Who damnation is just? So you can understand the gospel was being slandered even at that time to say, hey, we're not under the law. We're under grace, so we don't have to keep the commandments. We have to just have faith. This was a slander. And some were even affirming this is what Paul was saying, but that wasn't the case. They also said, let's just live our life because we're going to die anyway. In 1 Corinthians 15, 32. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Continue, please. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. So these teachings are evil communications to say we can do evil so that good may come, or we can sin because we're under grace, or the law is done away because of faith, or that we can just live our lives because we will die someday, or that we have liberty to fulfill the desires of our flesh rather than serve one another by fulfilling the law in love. Paul teaches us the truth concerning the law and faith. Can you read Romans chapter 2, verse 12 and verse 16, please? For as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. In the day when Elohim shall judge the secrets of men by Yahweh Christ according to my gospel. So we see when Elohim is going to judge the secrets of men. That's whatever's going on within us and whatever we do that others don't see. When Elohim is going to judge it by Christ, according to Paul's gospel, whoever lived without law and sinned without law, they're going to perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law that believe we should keep it, but didn't actually do it, are going to be judged by it as well. Knowing these things, the truth of whether we believe in the law or not, we shall perish without law or being judged by the law. Paul warns every man to do righteousness and sin not so that we may be accepted of Christ in the day of judgment. Can you read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9 and 10, please? Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Good or bad is determined by the law and the fruits of the Spirit that come from keeping it. So every man will be receiving their reward according to the law. This is why Paul teaches us also to depart from iniquity by our faith. Can you read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, please? Nevertheless, the foundation of Elohim standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and that every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So, if we call on the name of Christ, we have to depart from iniquity. And if we are in the knowledge of Elohim, we have to awake to righteousness and not sin. Paul was helping us get salvation to enter the kingdom by exceeding the hypocrisy of the Pharisees who didn't keep the law because Christ would not accept the workers of iniquity in his day to come. Can you read Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, please? Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? 
and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. It's not about speaking or doing acts in the Lord's name, but rather doing righteousness, depart from iniquity in the Lord's name to enter the kingdom by doing his Father's will, obeying his voice in his law. Let me touch on that. Go ahead. This part right here, um, I run into a good amount of people that, especially like when you bring forth the name, the true name, Yahweh unto them, they then go into, hey, look at all the things I did in the name of JC. Or, you know, look at all the things that I've done, all the things he's done for me in that name. Well, is that name strengthening you to keep the law? Is that name strengthening you to walk in the fruits of the spirit? Because he said you can prophesy in that name, cast out devils. What was missing? What was missing in this? His spirit was missing. Because if it was his spirit, it would have caused for him to know you. It would have caused for you to keep the commandments. It would have caused for you to walk in the fruits of the spirit. So I just wanted that because that actually gives the answer for that question when it is brought up. That's great for understanding, knowing him. Let's touch on that part. If you would, as he did say, I never knew you. Let's see what it means to know him. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 to 6, please. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. And he was missing because his spirit is in those that keep his commandments. All right. Because even the Pharisees, they spake it, but didn't do it because his spirit wasn't there. Continue, please. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. And we know Christ is the truth. All right. So we have to mind the devil. We talked before about how the devil's gospel was, I'm going to secure you before Allah I am to do whatever you want to do. But the truth is, Allah Hayyam wants us to keep his commandments so we could become immortal. And Allah Hayyam winks at the sins of men so that they may amend. So even if you are calling on a name that is not Christ's name or the Father's name, which Christ's name is for us is the name of salvation. It's the only name that can save us. It doesn't mean that he's not winking at your ignorance until you get to the place where he feels that you can receive it. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of Allah I am perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Christ did no sin, nor was guile found in his mouth, so we ought to walk in the same manner. Can you read 1 John 3, verse 7, please? Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. That's the simplicity of what it is as little children. Let no man deceive us. If we do righteousness, we are righteous, even as our Lord is righteous, and we're walking even as he walked. And that righteousness is his law. It's not our own self-proclaimed righteousness. Right. right. If we find that ourselves going against something of the commandment, then we need to check ourselves. Right. That's humility. Can you read First John three verse three through eleven, please? Um, First John chapter three verse three. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. 
for sin is the transgression of the law. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither know him. So we see, knowing him again came back up. To know Christ is actually not to sin. Because we know whom you yield yourself is to whom you obey. Right. We have to understand what lust has place. What's pulling me this way from my master who I'm seeking to obey? He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of Elohim was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So that's what Christ came for, to show us himself. He was manifested that we can see committing sin is of the devil. There's no light of Christ in sin. There's no spirit of Christ in sin. We have to know these things. Whosoever is born of Elohim doeth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of Elohim. So it's a process. We may have started off believing, but there's a process to actually get to the place of being born of Allah Hayim, becoming that new creature. We have to put the work in to overcome our lust so that no lust is established in us so that we will actually be reborn living unto Allah Hayim. That doesn't happen just by believing. Okay, it's work. But we have to get to that place where we don't actually commit sin. In this, the children of Allah are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of Allah neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. And John is showing what he's talking about is the same message from the beginning. Life or death, the commandments, or transgression of the law. And as we know, Paul was along the same page because he said, not the hairs of the law just before Allah, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So understand, we all have opportunity to keep the law and free choice to choose what we desire and do what we desire. Can you read Ecclesiasticus or the book of Sirach, chapter 15, verse 16 and 17, please? He hath set fire and water before thee, Stretch forth thy hand unto whither thou wilt. Before man is life and death, and whether him liketh shall be given him. That's important to understand, stretching forth thy hand, because remember, lust is a longing for a desire. Mm -hmm. What we want, that's what we're going to press towards. That's what we're going to be drawn unto. So we have to be honest with ourselves. If we see we're being drawn unto the wrong thing, we have to speak truth. And confess that and ask for deliverance from that and find the understanding of the law to combat that thought or combat that desire. And if we're doing it with our whole heart, we're going to get help. Can you read Gad the Seer, chapter 8, verse 7, please? And it gave each one free choice. If one wants to do good, it will be helped. And if one wants to do evil, a path will be open for him. Allah respects the choice of every man. We will get help if we want to do good. But if we do not be honest with ourselves about the desires we have and seek the help to overcome it, even seeking the instruction from someone who has understanding or receiving the correction someone gives when they see what we're struggling with, the path is going to be open. The devil is going to give us a way to do it. And in Allah's respect for every man's choice, we are all left to do what we will. Can you read Revelations 22 and 11, please? He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. Allah, he's meek. He's long-suffering. He lets everyone do what they will. 
And though we may all live as we please, Christ is still coming to reward us for the good or bad that we're doing. Can you read Revelation chapter 22, verse 12 to 14, please? 12 to 15, sorry. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Thus, we confirm we have to keep the law because that's the only way to have right to the tree of life and to enter into the gates of the city and the kingdom. If we are idolaters serving the devil to stay in our lusts, not keeping the law, we shall not enter. Can you read? Continue in verse 15, please. But without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh the lie. Seeing this, let's beware of lying to say we know Allah Hayyam, but we aren't keeping his law, as that is not the truth from his apostles' teaching, as we read in um, 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 to 6. And we know now love is the fulfillment of the law, as Paul spake of in Romans chapter 13, verse 8 to 10. And if we do the right thing, if we keep the commandments, our prayers will be heard. Or if our heart is on the right endeavor and we're humbly asking, seeking the help, that's actually doing his commandments too. Because the apostle, I mean, the disciple Clement gave us an ordinance to take correction humbly and seek it humbly. First John 3, verse 22 to 24, please. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of the Son, Yahweh Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. So, the commands are to believe on the name of Yahweh Christ and love one another by fulfilling the law. That is still what we ought to do. Continue in verse 24, please. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. As Zach, I mentioned about the spirit of Christ isn't there when the law isn't being kept. And we see John confirms it because if we actually love one another by fulfilling the law and believing on the name Yache, then we know we're dwelling in him and he's actually dwelling in us. Right. We can see his name manifesting in our spirits by how we operate and how we think, and how we perceive things. Yeah. The devil understands the faith in Christ and keeping the commandments will get us the spirit and access to the tree of life. So he's after those who seek to do those two things. Revelations chapter 12 or 17, please. I'm stuck. Um, uh, you remember what he said with his disciples that he opened their understanding that they could understand? Yeah. It's him. Like believing in his name the true name, it actually opens your understanding. Like he actually, he actually opens your understanding because you're actually believing on him and not another. Like it, it just, it comes together. Uh -huh. The name Yache really, right. He holds that much power. Right. Okay. Um, Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of Allah and have the testimony of Yahweh Christ. So we see the devil knows who to actually go after because he wants to keep us from life. He's an adversary to life. And those who keep the commandments of Allah and have the testimony of Yahweh in the fruits of their works, he knows those are the ones he needs to make war with because those who do not keep the commandments or do not have the testimony of Yache Christ specifically, that name, he knows he's already prevailed. There's no war to be had with those because that's not going to get access to the tree of life. 
Now the saints of all nations, they will endure the temptation of the devil and keep the commandments and faith in Yahche unto the end. Can you read Revelations 14 and 12, please? Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Allah and the faith of Yahche. That's why our patience is. If we want to be counted for saints, we actually have to be the ones that keep the commandments and faith of Yahche. All right. There is none other name given under heaven wherein we may be saved. Okay. If you need further edification on the name Yahche, please visit. Um, we also have the lessons on the name above all names. And we also have all the edification on the website, www.hebrewreaders.com. Yes, sir. And the lesson called the name of salvation. Thank you. Now, knowing these things, we need the law because the law shows our faith and the spirit of Christ is in us. How shall we prepare ourselves for the trial to come, knowing that the devil is making war against Christ's people? Let's see what Baruch taught us. Second Baruch chapter 31, please. And I answered and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, and I will speak to you, and give ear, O seed of Jacob, and I will instruct you. Forget not Zion, but hold in remembrance the anguish of Jerusalem. For lo, the days come when everything that is shall become the prey of corruption, and be as though it had not been. But as for you, if you prepare your hearts, so as to sow in them the fruits of the law, it shall protect you in that time, which the mighty one is to shake the whole creation. So we see what we need to be doing. Prepare our hearts so as to sow in them the fruits of the law. That preparation comes by getting understanding of what lusts we have and finding the laws to combat them in our thoughts and putting in the work the action to actually overcome them in our heart so that fruits can actually come forth from the law in us. And it's essential to start doing it now because if we do that, it shall protect us in the time to come when the mighty one shall shake the whole creation. The part it says, for lo, the days come when everything that is shall become the prey of corruption and be as though it had not been. That's the times that we're in, where everything is flipped upside down, where everything is lawless, though everything is far away from the commandments. So it seems like it's very hard for the law to be kept because we're so far away from the commandments. But he actually tells us to prepare ourselves, prepare our hearts to actually keep it, even in the midst of a perverse generation. So... And as Baruch was leaving, he gave us admonitions to help us. Second Baruch chapter 44, verse 2, please. Behold, I go unto my fathers according to the way of all the earth, but withdraw you not from the way of the law, but guard and admonish the people which remain, lest they withdraw from the commandments of the mighty one. For you see that he whom we serve is just, and our creator is no respecter of persons. This is important to understand. Our Allah Ahaya, Ashere Ahaya, and our Lord, Yache, they are not idols. Idols, you can live unjustly, you can falsely forswear yourselves and think not to be hurt, as Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 spake of. But our creator, he is just, and he's not a respecter of person. So Baruch wants us not to withdraw from the law, nor the commandments of the mighty one, because he is truly holy and we are called to be holy as he is holy. But he's going to hold us accountable. Right. He's not like an evil spirit where you don't have to take accountability for your actions or things that you do. He's going to hold you accountable because that's what a righteous person would do. Right. And Paul prepared us to do the righteousness that the law speaks of and not to sin with the same understanding in mind that Allah is not a respecter of persons. 
Can you read Romans 2, verse 11, 12, and 16, please? For there is no respect of persons with Elohim. For as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. In the day when Elohim shall judge the secrets of men by Yahweh Christ, according to my gospel. So from the days of the prophets to the day of the apostles, it's the same Elohim. He hasn't changed. He's not a respecter of persons. Let's continue to see what Baruch teaches us in chapter 44, verse 5, please. And see what hath befallen Zion and what hath happened to Jerusalem. For the judgment of the mighty one shall thereby be made known and his ways with no pathfinding out are right. But if ye endure and persevere in its fear and do not forget his law, the time shall change over you for good and you shall see the consolation of Zion. That is essential for us. If we endure and persevere in his fear and do not forget his law, the time shall change over for our good. Everything that's to come will actually be to help us. Remember all things that come from Allah and take as good or right. take everything as good from him. Mm -hmm. This whole thing, we're going to see the consolation of Zion, the restoration of our mother, Jerusalem, which is above the mother of us all, Jew and Gentile, if we endure and persevere in the fear and don't forget the law. The people who will receive the world to come of the nation of Israel are those who have not withdrawn from mercy and preserve the truth of the law by keeping it. Can you read Second Baruch chapter 44, verse 14 and 15, please? These are they who have acquired for themselves treasures of wisdom, and with them are found stores of understanding, and from mercy have they not withdrawn, and the truth of the law have they preserved. For to them shall be given the world to come, but the dwelling of the rest who are many, shall be in the fire. As you all know, for the children of Israel, many are called, but few are chosen, and many shall fall away. But for those who actually persevere and preserve the truth in the law, they will inherit the world to come. Allah will remember us to send us guides by the admonitions of Baruch, and while we await those guides, we just have to prepare our hearts to obey the law and obey those teachers when they come. Can you read Second Baruch chapter 46, verse 1 to 6, please? And my son and the elders of the people answered and said unto me, Has the mighty one humiliated us to such a degree to take you from us quickly? And truly we shall be in darkness. And there shall be no light to the people who are left. For where again shall we seek the law? Or who will distinguish for us between death and life? And I said unto them, The throne of the mighty one I cannot resist. Nevertheless, there shall not be wanting to Israel a wise man, nor a son of the law to the race of Jacob. But only prepare you your hearts that ye may obey the law and be subject to those who are in fear are wise and understanding and prepare your souls that ye may not depart from them for if ye do these things good tidings shall come unto you which i before told you of nor shall you fall into torment of which i testified to you before now this is good it's interesting clement started off talking about humbling ourselves to be able to receive correction and instruction. And here Baruch in closing was admonishing us to prepare our hearts, not only to obey the law, but also to be subject to those who in fear are wise and understanding and make sure our souls is prepared not to depart from them. The apostles, prophets, they understood that the two witnesses will come. He said, Israel will not be wanting a wise man, which is a man of wisdom, nor a son of the law. So there will be two. And we need to prepare our souls not to depart and to be in subjection to them. Because being able to humble ourselves and listen, 
is essential for our faith. As Yache prophesied, two witnesses will come. We have videos and lessons and edification on that on the website as well on the YouTube for you to get understanding of those things. So hopefully that helps for understanding. We do need to keep the law still. The devil is after those who actually keep the law and the faith of Yache Christ. We need to believe on the name Yache specifically. That is the name of salvation in the true Hebrew language still retained among the children of Israel coming out to sub-Saharan Africa among the Bantu. And we have to prepare our hearts to keep the law and persevere in the fear of Allah no matter what comes so that we can inherit the world to come. Anything else? Yeah, it's an important thing not to reject those that are wise. If you see that a person has more wisdom than you when it comes to the law and when it comes to the scriptures and understanding, the book of Sirach actually says, don't put yourself as an underling to a man that is less than thyself. But if you see a man of understanding, wear out the footsteps of his door. So if if there is a man of understanding that you run across and they have understanding and they're able to teach you and guide you, please humble yourself and don't lift yourself up against them or against him, but learn from him so that you may be guided. Okay, that's very important. Because a lot of times we want to have the understanding. We want the understanding to be given to us. But that is following after your own desire. Because that may not be what Allah wants for you. Or what is needful for you. And Allah has his own thing. He already has prophecy set in motion. Where two witnesses are going to come and teach the people. And also we see even in that same prophecy. That many people are going to try to make void the teachings of the two witnesses and also the apostles and also the prophets. So they're going to try to get away from keeping the commandments all together. So you have to be very, very vigilant, praying, asking Allah, if you're asking, first and foremost, if you're asking for understanding, you're asking for Allah to show you things in your private prayers, then Allah actually sends you someone to teach you please receive them so that you can actually learn and grow and not allow the enemy to have place through pride to cast you away or to turn you away to go follow after him. Okay, this is very important, especially in humility. You understand, we, we understand. Like for me, if I meet someone and they have understanding and they're and they're prospering and I see Allah is growing and working in them and I see that they're able to teach and give understanding of things that they truly know that Allah has either revealed or shown to them or that they actually have experienced learn and take that information take the information and and don't lift yourself up against them Okay, that is very important, especially coming into the time that we're coming into and seeing the prophecies that are prophesied. Amen. Thank you. You got anything else? I'm sorry. All right. We pray that live. We hope you all enjoyed the lesson. We're going to be implementing the law class um, every week, Allah and willing. So um, next law class, we will be Alhaim wasn't going over the old and new covenant. All right. So we hope everybody has a blessed day. Alhaim, keep you all. And may you be strengthened in the law. Amen. Inshallah. HRC, 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 HRC,